Hello friends. In this video, I will discuss the gradient divergence and curl in Cartesian coordinate system. And these functions are very important in electrodynamics. First, I will discuss the del operator and then the gradient of a scalar function and then divergence and curl of a vector function. So del operator is a vector differential operator and usually represented by the symbol this reverse triangle and it is also known as nebula and in Cartesian coordinates it is written as a vector del equal to delta by delta x i cap plus delta by delta y j cap plus delta by delta z k cap and this operator del have a significant role in electrodynamics and now we discuss the gradient when this operator del operates a scalar function it is known as the gradient and if we take an example of the temperature which depends on the coordinates x y z in a room the temperature may vary along the three directions and the temperature change in the temperature can be given by a theorem of part partial derivatives according to which we can write dt equal to a change in x axis delta t by delta x dx plus delta t by delta y dy plus delta t by delta z dz so this tells how the temperature t changes along the directions dx dy dz and this equation one is similar to the dot product of two functions like delta t by delta x i cap plus delta t by delta y j cap plus delta t by delta z k cap dot dx i plus dy j plus dz k so this vector is known as the displacement vector dl so this function dt can be written as del t dot dl and this del t is known as the gradient of t which is a vector quantity because it have the delta t by delta x i cap plus delta t by delta y j cap plus delta t by delta z k cap and the gradient of a function gives the direction of the greatest change in the field and the physical interpretation of gradient is that as we have seen in last slide that gradient is a vector quantity so it have both the magnitude and direction and gradient is a directional derivative and the change in the temperature function dt can be written as del t dot dl that uh, the dot product of two vectors is always the magnitude of del t the magnitude of dl and cos theta the angle between these two vectors and the change in the function t will be maximum for cos theta equal to 1 or theta will be 0 degree so magnitude tells us about the maximum rate of change of the function that is magnitude of del t and the direction so the gradient shows the direction along the maximum rate of change of the function this is an example of a metal rod which have some temperature gradient means one end is at suppose 90 degree centigrade and other end is at 20 degree centigrade so the temperature gradient is from direction is from higher temperature to lower temperature 90 degree to 20 degree so temperature temp gradient is shown in this metal load similarly the potential gradient tells about the electric field so e, e uh, equal to minus del v this is an example how we can find out the gradient of a scalar function suppose here we have a magnitude of position vector that is r so r equal to under root x square plus y square plus z square so gradient will be del r and del equal to delta by delta x of this r x cap plus delta r by delta y y cap plus delta r by delta z z cap so we will have to take the partial differentiation of this function r and uh, we in with respect to x we have to take under root x square plus y square plus z square so it will be 1 upon under root 1 x uh, x square plus y square plus z square then differentiation of this 2x 
similarly in this 2y by this and 2z by this and 2 and 2 cancel out then we, it will be x x cap plus y y cap plus z z cap divided by under root x square plus y square plus z square so this vector is the position vector r vector divided by its magnitude and if a vector is divided by its magnitude then it is the unit vector so gradient of r equal to r cap now we discuss the divergence of a vector field so divergence of a vector is the measure of how much the vector function is spreading out from a particular point in the space and mathematically it is written as divergence a equal to del dot a so a vector function is operated with del with dot product and divergence of a vector field is always a scalar field because the product of two you know, dot product of two vectors is always a scalar quantity and we have some positive divergence if from some source is there and the line of forces or vectors are coming out from this so it is known as the positive divergence so something is coming out from this point so it is not it, it can be treated as a source whereas if the feed lines are converging at a point so this is known as a sink so and this have the negative divergence and if we have the uniform parallel lines then it is it have no divergence or it, it has zero divergence we can have the this example in case of the electric field lines where the electric field lines originate from positive charge and they are diverging from the positive charge it is known as the source whereas the negative charge they are con con converging at negative charge and it is known as the sink so this was an example for electric field lines and the physically we can say that uh, the divergence tells that how much a vector function is spreading out from a particular point in the space and if the divergence of a vector field is positive it indicates the vector is spreading out or diverging and this point is known as the source point whereas the negative value of divergence tells the vector is converging and it is known as sink and if a, if a vector have zero divergence it is known as solenoidal vector so this is an example how we can find out the divergence for the cartesian coordinate system if we have vector v a that is x square i plus 3 x z square j cap minus 2 x z k cap similarly we have another vector so we have to find a divergence means you have to take the dot product of this vector with operator del so del is a partial differential operator so it will be delta by delta x of this x square because i cap dot i cap will give one similarly delta by delta y of this 3x z square and delta by delta z of 2x minus 2x z and it is 2x plus 0 minus 2x is equal to 0 similarly we can find out also for this second vector so this is how we can find out the divergence we have to take the dot product with del now what is the curl and in cartesian coordinates we, we are dealing with only i cap j cap a k cap as the unit vector so curl is the cross product of a vector with operator del so curl of a vector uh, function f equal to del cross f and the cross product it can be found easily by the determinant method that i cap j cap k cap and the component of this hash vector that is del the component are del by delta x delta by delta y delta by delta z these are the component of this del and they, this vector f has components fx i plus fyj plus fz k so the components will be fx fy fz along the unit vectors ij k or xyz axis so curl of a vector is always a vector which shows the rotation of the vector and if the curl of a vector field is zero then it is called as a rotational field there is no rotation and physically the curl of a vector field measures the tendency of the vector field to rotate or to curl around and in this figure if we have a, an example that if we imagine that 
the vector field is represented by the velocity vector of water in a lake and if there is a big whirlpool then it will have always a very large curl and in this figure if we see that the velocity uh, the velocity field lines are in x y plane they are rotating in x y plane so if uh, the velocity vector field is in x y plane then the curl is in pointing in z direction according to this uh, third direction because it is in x y plane that direction is pointing in z direction the magnitude of curl vector tells us about the maximum circulation whereas the direction of the curl vector will be always perpendicular to the plane of area and it is very important in fluid mechanics magnetics and electromagnetism and if del cross f equal to 0 means curl of a function f is 0 then it means it is a rotational vector so this is the summary of gradient divergence and curl gradient means when we are operating an a scalar function with operator del divergence means when we are taking the dot product of a vector with del and curl means we are taking the cross product of a vector with del operator and gradient tells about the maximum rate of change of a quantity whereas divergence tells the magnitude of a source or a sink and the curl tells about the rotation or the uniformity of a vector field and zero divergence is said to be a solenoidal vector whereas if curl is zero then it is known as a rotational vector so this is an example if you have a vector a defined as x plus 2y plus az i cap plus bx minus 3y minus z j cap plus k 4x plus cy plus z z cap so you have to find a b c if this vector is irrotational irrotational means the curl of this vector should be zero irrotational means the curl of this vector should be zero and if you, we take the del cross a so del cross a can be taken as this determinant method i j k delta by delta x delta by delta y delta by z z and the component this a x a x means the uh, i component with x plus 2 y plus a z similarly this is a y and a z you put these all here and if you expand it then if it is zero then the coefficient should be also zero so then we can find out the value of this coefficient a and a b c then there are some vector identities and what is second derivatives so first one is the divergence of gradient so divergence of gradient del dot del t del t is the uh, gradient and the divergence of this gives us a operator which is known as laplacian so if we have a gradient del t and you take the divergence means you have to dot product with del so it will be del means x cap delta by delta x plus y cap delta by delta y plus z cap delta by delta z dot gradient of t so delta t by delta x x cap plus delta t by delta y y cap plus delta t by delta z z cap so if you we have the dot product of two vectors so it will give us x cap dot x cap will one so delta 2 t by delta x square plus delta 2 t by delta y square plus delta 2 t by delta z square that is del square t so this del square t is called the Laplacian of the function t and this del square is known as the Laplacian operator it is a second order partial differential operator which is a scalar uh, operator now the curl of the gradient gradient was del t and curl means you are taking the cross product with del and the curl of gradient is always zero this can be also proved these all are the vector identities similarly gradient of the divergence del del dot b it can be also found but it is not like del square uh, it is not uh, equal to del square v similarly divergence of curl is zero divergence of curl, curl means del cross b and if you take the divergence means del dot del cross b and if we uh, use the uh, cross product and dot product then it, it will give us the zero value because two rows are same so it will be zero one important identity is here 
the curl of curl. So we have a curl del cross B, and if we are taking the curl of curl means we are operating it with cross product with del. So del cross del cross B, it can be expanded with uh, like vector triple product that was A cross B cross C was A B C minus B C A. So similarly here we can uh, write del cross del cross B means del del B minus del del means that is del square B. So curl of curl V equal to gradient of divergence B minus del square B where del square is the Laplacian operator. So thanks for watching this video and uh, today we have this uh, uh, del, uh, gradient divergence and curl in Cartesian coordinate system. So next time we will discuss it in uh, spherical and cylindrical coordinate system. So in next video we will discuss the uh, spherical and cylindrical uh, uh, coordinate system. <coughs> okay, thank you for watching.